Chuck, Star Talk is closing in on one million subscribers. That's right. That's right. Well, you you may be our one millionth customer. <laughs> Drop <laughs> balloons, drop balloons, streamers. Yeah, yeah. We are planning a special event when that happens. That's right. We're going to do a live cosmic queries. So the deal is you can actually be with us. And instead of me butchering your name, you can say your name to Neil and then ask him a question. It's going to be really cool. So you got to make sure that you hit subscribe if you're not a subscriber and turn on your notifications so that you can know exactly when this event is going to happen and you won't miss out. All right, we'll see you then. Hey there, Neil and Chuck. Hey, Matt Pat, thanks for dropping in on Star Talk. Hey, Matt Pat, how are you, buddy? So I've been getting a lot of requests to cover theories on the show Rick and Morty, and I was hoping that you guys might be able to help me out with some of the science elements. So in season one, episode four, we learned that one of the things that put Rick on the multiversal most wanted list is his ability to harness the energy that's found inside of dark matter. And in that episode, we actually learned that his spaceship runs on a fuel made of concentrated dark matter. And it's not like this is a new concept, right? Science fiction has been talking about dark matter for decades at this point and in the latent potential found inside of it. But I was wondering, what is dark matter in the first place? Is it as powerful as science fiction leads us to believe? Could it power a spaceship like the one that we see in Rick and Morty? And most importantly of all, can it be our gasoline of the future? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, Wait, you, want to know, you, want, you want to know whether it's the new form of gasoline for getting around the galaxy. Is that yeah. <laughs> Which, by the way, if you look at Rick's, uh, Rick and Morty, if you look at his ship, um, the engines are made out of garbage cans. But it's okay because he's a genius. <laughs> That's how they cover that. <laughs> yeah, you just say he's a genius. That, that's he's all you got to do. Right. Well, so my first comment is try to not get your science from cartoons. That's just a just a just start there. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, some a, a few decades ago, this is how old this is, um, someone compiled a list of the cartoon laws of physics. <laughs> Have you seen this, Jack? No, I haven't. That's yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, Matt Pat, I don't know if you've seen it, but there's um so the first one is um when you run off of a cliff. Gravity only engages after you notice you have run off of the cliff. <laughs> Absolutely. Like you don't you don't just fall, you have to like hover there, look around, realize there's no longer ground beneath you, and then you fall. So that's a that's a law of physics manifested in cartoons, for example. Right. So Especially whole... if you're a coyote. <laughs> Especially if you're a coyote. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it's species dependent, but definitely the best examples are from the coyote. So, uh, but we can make an, an exception here with Rick and Morty because there's clearly a lot of thought put into uh, the science that's in it and the implications of so the science that's in it, uh, timelines and, 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 and biogenetic transformations. So Rick and Morty has elevated itself to be worthy of this kind of discussion. I just, so I just want to say that. Uh, uh, that's right. That's what happens when you're, a, when you're, when you're the <laughs> smartest ma man in the universe, Morty. <laughs> <laughs> that's my Rick. It's awful. That's <laughs> I'll give it a. That's a B plus. B plus. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so here's the thing. Uh, probably they had intended to say dark energy instead of dark matter. Probably. The reason why I the, the reason why I offer this is that dark energy is a mysterious. By the way, they're both mysterious. We don't know what either of them are made of dark matter or dark energy. Uh, dark matter is a source of gravity in the universe. It's most of the gravity manifested in the universe is from this mysterious entity called dark matter. Dark energy is a mysterious pressure in the vacuum of space that is causing matter to, to uh, accelerate away from itself. And so the expanding universe is accelerating against the interests and the wishes of the collective gravity of all the galaxies. So people who are wondering whether this can be tapped as an energy source, 
they generally they apply that to dark energy because then if you're over here and you want to be over there you put in the the negative gravity and you then you just shoot away from whatever would have been pulling you in in the first place so but that being said if you want to stick to the script and the dark matter concept it turns out dark matter does not interact with our matter at all other than by its gravity and what i mean by that is if you have a, like a cup of water and you grab it uh, you can touch the glass at there's water inside that doesn't spill out of the glass. You can interact with the atoms and molecules of our world. Dark matter does not interact that way. In fact, if there was something made of dark matter in front of you, you would not be able to see it. You would not even be able to touch it because the forces involved with dark matter are not the same as the forces involved in the molecules of your flesh. But there's an additional problem. Dark matter not only doesn't interact with our molecules, it doesn't interact with itself. And if it doesn't interact with itself, it can't concentrate itself. It can't latch on to itself. So all our best current ideas of dark matter tell us there is no dark matter thing out there. You can't concentrate dark matter because that implies you can get it to stick together to itself. So, um, but again, it's science fiction and it's a cartoon, so we give it to them. What they've done there, the writers, is taken something that's mysterious, still mysterious on the frontier of physics, and made something fun with it in the cartoon. And fine, <laughs> maybe the day we discover what dark matter is and dark energy, maybe you could do all of that. that what, what Rick is doing with his garbage cans in his spaceship. <laughs> I can't say no, technically, okay? Um, but that's the fun part of good science fiction, that you keep what you know intact and take the stuff that's on the boundary and extend that into the storytelling that you care about. So two things I take away from this. Uh, one is that dark matter is a bit of an a-hole, very antisocial. <laughs> antisocial. Just, you know, doesn't want to be bothered with anyone or anything. And two, this is what we're hearing from Tyson C-138 in this dimension. But in the, is there another dimension where like Tyson 365 might have another explanation? No. <laughs> <laughs> All Tysons are coordinated. <laughs> the Citadel of Tysons. The Citadel. We're, we're, we're all trained in the same school. Of, uh, yeah, so... Uh, to, you can't ask what it is that he's using. We can say, sure, uh, they're, they're safe in the realm of our modern day scientific ignorance. And he's a genius, so there it is. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. That actually answers my question really well. But while I have you here and while we're talking about matter, I'd love to ask one more. In the episode Morty Night Run, we're introduced to a character named Fart. It's this uh, cloud that's able to change the composition of atoms. Now, in the episode, we're specifically told that Fart can't be destroyed using regular matter, that instead he needs to be killed using an antimatter gun. Now, the question is, what is antimatter? Is that just a scientific hypothetical, or is it a real thing? And if it is real, what is its theoretical usage? outside of, you know, killing cloud-based life forms. Oh my God, I love it. By the way, <laughs> probably one of my favorite episodes of Rick and Morty ever because of Fart. And they do kind of like a little uh, David Bowie-esque uh, musical number uh, uh, called Goodbye Moon Men. And uh, it's, I don't know, it's sublime to me. I just, and by the way, Fart, uh, they, Rick names him Fart because uh, because he's gaseous, of course. He's, he doesn't have form. And so, uh, and he doesn't know what a fart is. And so he says, I like this name, Fart. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. Uh, and it's not an it's not an acronym for something. I don't think it, it is. He you just... know, I, 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 so I haven't seen that episode. That's yeah. why. But I can totally talk about uh, antimatter. So first of all, antimatter is real. 
this yeah. favorite fuel of science fiction. It is real. It was proposed back in the 1930s and it would take a while before it was discovered in the laboratory. And it turns out that for all the ordinary particles that we know and love, um, there is a version of that particle that is identical to it in all ways except certain key properties, which when they come back together with its original, with, with the matter particle, they an annihilate entirely. So you start with two particles, they get together and poof, they simply become energy. It's a perfect annihilation. It's matter and antimatter. So it's the great term, antimatter. It's like the force and the dark side, you know, the two sides of a coin. Um, so that's why it plays so well into science fiction and into storytelling. Uh, and so we happen to live in a universe filled with matter, but we can make antimatter in the laboratory. All right, so now you have matter and you want to destroy it. Generally, if you're the military and you want to destroy something, you break it apart so that what, what <laughs> so however it used to function, it no longer functions that way. All right, but if you have a substance that doesn't depend on whether it's attached in a particular way, that it's that its very essence is just the matter that it is, then hacking away bits of it is not going to make a difference. Think of in Terminator 2, the, the, the liquid metal Terminator, you can break pieces apart from him and he still has the essence of what he is as that, as that model was it the T2000 or something? Yeah. <laughs> I forgot. What, whatever <laughs> I forgot model. What you, there's so <laughs> many of them now. There's, there's so many Terminators. <laughs> so little time. So, so it turns out if you have this cloud of atoms, no, you're not going to destroy them because it's matter unless you figure out a way to turn it entirely into energy. So now you get an antimatter particle stream to shoot into this mat, this fart matter. I can't believe I'm just <laughs> And then you can annihilate the fart matter with anti-fart matter. And then it becomes pure energy and whatever the thing was before, it is no longer. So, so by the way, the movie, uh, which was it? One of the Dan Brown movies, Angels and Demons. I think that was the one. Of course, the story too, but I tend to watch movies rather than read the books. So I'm referencing the movie. Forgive me, you <laughs> literate folks out there. So in there, the, the, the Vatican is walking around with this vial of, of antimatter and it's carried around like it's something precious and it could destabilize the world. So first, I, I've been in some church basements. I've never seen particle accelerators there. So I don't know how they came up with antimatter. The, You're not the, going just... to the right churches, man. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta come on down to the church where we have in our antimatter revival. <laughs> <laughs> it must be. All church basements I've been in, there were, there were cupcakes and bake sales. That's right. all I saw in those basements. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. we the, have exercised <laughs> the particle. Mm. Got the, the demon day. out of the, the demons have been removed, <laughs> right? I cast you out, boson. <laughs> Bills of boson, be gone. <laughs> So, boson is an actual particle. Chuck, you're doing your homework on this. Um, so here's my point. They, they're they walking around like it's something rare and precious, but we can manufacture antimatter all the time and uh, on command in particle accelerators. So it sounded good in the fictional storytelling, but in practice, it's really bad science fiction in that sense, because it's not something weird or exotic, but it does have the power to annihilate. And as it, what, what, as it's the most efficient way to turn matter into energy. The sun turns matter into energy all the time by converting hydrogen into helium, but that's not as efficient as turning pure matter and antimatter into pure energy. <clears throat> so there you have it. The yes. fart gas. The fart gas. <laughs> the, 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 a, 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 an effective countermeasure to the fart gas. Yes. Yes. Antimatter fart gas. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, I've I've had a couple cases of that. So it's not well, as much I, it's not as much uh, science fiction as people might think. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So what you don't want is an, find your twin in an antimatter universe who's also gassy. Right. That could that could destabilize all of the creation. Right. He's <laughs> the destroyed two this fart. universe and every other universe. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all the time we have for today. But uh, make sure you check out what's it called? Film Theorist Channel. Great name. This is like people thinking about films in ways and dimensions that I bet the director and producers had never intended. <laughs> <laughs> and on there, uh, we'll discuss theories of the multiverse in one of the Rick and Morty episodes uh, involving dark matter. And we do that with, of course, Matt Pat. So, uh, by the way, we'll put that specific link in the description. Uh, anyway, thanks for your questions, Matt Pat. You got it. Thank you, Neil and Chuck, for helping to formulate these theories with me. No problem. And thanks, Chuck, as always, for uh, helping me decode the universe for anyone who will listen. My pleasure, <laughs> always. And until next time, as always, keep looking up. Chuck, I got a package in the mail. Look at that. It's a black box. Did you oh, go to sorry, a crash sorry. site? <laughs> you went to a crash site and picked up the black box? <laughs> oh, it's, it's, like, it's from YouTube. Oh, cool. Uh, it could be our million subscriber plaque. It could be. Can, can I open it? Can no, I open it? no, no, you can't open it. We have I to want... open that live on the air during the event. I want to open it now. No, no, you got it. <laughs> now you're the kid that found the presents in the closet five days before Christmas, <laughs> and you got to wait till Christmas Day now, man. That's all there is to it. That is punishment so there you go if you want to see what's in the box just make sure you subscribe and turn on your notifications and you can see at the live event i also want to see what's in the box well good now you got a reason to come <laughs> i gotta show up at the live event now you have to show up okay all right we'll see you guys there and then